everyone, welcome back to Gas Mask Review, you already know the channel because you clicked on it, or maybe you're subscribed and you don't really look before you leap. Today instead of a bare table I've actually put down the Shemag, uh, I've been taking more pictures recently with this on Reddit. So. Anyway, review today is nothing particularly new or interesting, but nothing too old either. Actually it's one I've been putting off reviewing for a good while. The Polish MC1. This is honestly a piece of shit. <laughs> okay, actually, no. Um, as far as quality goes, it's damn good. Because, of course, on YouTube you can find a video by Weapons and Stuff 93 where he did actually leave one of these in a container of lye, which is uh, basically drain on blocker. If you don't know what lye is, Google it L Y E caustic soda and it was fine. Now my friend actually owns this, this isn't mine, this is a size 2, uh, if I was going to buy one I would buy the civil defence version, this is the military variant. Uh, I find the green a bit too hideous, like a lot of gas masks do look good in green, I'm not sure if this is one of them or, I think I'm just biased. Because my first experience of an MC1 was my friend ordering this and you did not see how it came before now. Because before it was disgusting. If you did this, it would have flaked. It was covered in green and yellow disgusting flakes. It was white. It was just all over. It looked terrible. It was really bad. Um, the straps were stained up. I cannot get the marks out of the back of that. But uh, I have cleaned it since. There are white marks from where I've left cleaning shite to dry and haven't quite got rid of it. And it does still have the uh, <laughs> fucking vile smell to it. Like it was disgusting. Uh, I would post a link to the pictures, however the post was deleted. I should still have the image around, but and do you know what? I'll find it in the editing process and I'll put it at the very end of the video, even after I say goodbye. So Onto the actual mask. This, of course, is the Polish MC1. This was made during the Cold War and was a basic copy by Poland of the Czech CM3. Czech CM3, of course, had different exhale ports and such, but it was exceedingly similar. It was this basic design. Uh, this one is a size 2. It's got a bunch of different stamps on it, and I do not know what any of them mean, apart from the dots, which, of course, tells me it was made in February. It has 84 and 95, now we can rule out 95, so we can assume this is a 1984 mask. Uh, Poland did make two of these, there's the grey version and the green version, as I did say, the, gr the grey version was for civil defence, green is for military. This would come with a bag and a filter, I'm not quite sure which filter it would come with, I'm guessing an MOF2, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, don't quote me on it, because this isn't a mask I own. And if I do own one of them, it'll be because I happen to have too much disposable income. Now, when my friend bought this, he did buy dirty surplus. Now, that's something I always avoid. I do like to buy new surplus unless I cannot find it in new. Uh, often things like the Hungarian 70M from one of our previous videos doesn't come new. So I had to find uh, an old, what's the word, sort of like an old used surplus storage. But back onto the MC1, that's capitals MC-1. Uh, it's 40mm Gost. It is a 6 point elasticated head harness, which is nice. No rubber, it's not a helmet style mask. It does have this little bridge in the middle, which is nice. It's actually comfortable to wear. If we have a look on the inside, you will see Tissot tubes. Of course, no oral nasal cup. This was the Eastern block, after all. Crimped on eyepieces and Bakelite, I believe, or just cheap shit plastic exhale. And, uh, I don't think this has a voice diaphragm. So we can actually unscrew this front piece, which I had to do when cleaning it. Well, there goes that, never needed it anyway. And there's mesh. I believe this is more for protection for the exhale valve than anything else. As a, yeah, there isn't. There is not a voice diaphragm. Screw that back on. 
There isn't much to say about these, the history is quite basic, it's just here's a mask that'll do. It's of course um, in many ways vastly better than the MP4. So, I don't control what Poland makes. So Anything's better than a cheek filter mask. Uh, we should have a cheek filter mask review coming soon, so that'll be nice. Keep an eye out for that. Whoops, hit the tripod. Like I said, even though this is a size 2, uh, if you've watched the videos for a while, I'm going to put this on now, you'll know that I am extra large. I am the size largest of whatever mask is available. However, I can actually wear this. I'm not going to show it because... Even though my face has been in a lot of videos. Uh-oh. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I started to suffocate. The uh, intake is jammed. Fuck. <laughs> Oxygen stopped reaching me there. That was... Uh... Oh, that wasn't pleasant. I have something that I can poke that through with. There we go. Alright. Let's try that one again. There we go. So despite being a size 2 and um, trying to suffocate me, it does actually fit me, surprisingly. My eyes are disturbingly close to the lenses. But it doesn't do much of a problem. The CISO tubes, of course, prevent any fogging up. And I hope you're able to hear me properly. Because the louder I speak, the more reverberation it seems to get. I'm guessing that's just how the voice diaph not voice diaphragm, sorry, the exhale valve was made. As, of course, it doesn't feature a voice diaphragm. I'm just going to lean in front of you. So, we've got ourselves our ghost filter attached to the normalised threading hose. And I'm just going to... Threading? I meant to say threaded. I'm going to put that on here. Now it sounds a lot different when I'm breathing. as opposed to no filter. That's quite a good sound. Imagine using that for an audio add-on. If I take that off, it does re uh, reverberate a lot more. <laughs> it's really like a dog fart, so... That's my friend who did buy this. Uh, it is usually customary, or at least among my little circle of collectors, it is customary that uh, whoever buys the gas mask is the first to wear the gas mask. So, a circle of friends, you buy a gas mask, I'm like, oh, let me take a fucking picture for my Insta. Um, I have actually started taking more pictures of just my masks. Oh, my Instagram is just all PPE and cool shit. Um, but I mean, people just really want to take pictures of themselves, yeah, they want to see what they look like. So... Often the rule is, he who bought it, or she, uh, is the first to wear it, to break it in, to break that seal. However, ha 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 ha, I had to clean this thing for days. The damage that was done to it, it was fucking disgusting. It was unwearable, it stank. What you're seeing now isn't even perfect. But I tell you, it is much better. It looked like that. Like, it looked like the box. It was vile, but more green and brown. It looked like sick. It looked like a pile of dinosaurs sick had psoriasis. It was just awful. But anyway, 
If you want one, pick them up. They were cheap because this was six pound, as it was dirty surplus. Uh, so he did get no bag, no filter, no nothing. A full bag and filter set, um, at least in my max size, would cost me around seventeen pounds today, which is um, extortionate, fucking extortionate. Really, these shouldn't be paid too much for. Maybe ten quid, fifteen if you want the full set, the filter, the bag. Don't pick up the filter, obviously. I don't tell you that. So I often don't with the series. It's actually a good mask, but it's more of a mask, I'd say, if I were to buy one of these, I'd buy it for cheap. Because it would be a gas mask I would bring out with my friends. Because this isn't a collector's piece as far as I'm concerned. This is the kind of thing I'd bring out when it's like, oh, yeah, I might get into a fight later. Fuck it. Who cares if my lens gets smashed? You know, this is kind of a, uh, oh, what, we're going to have a bonfire later? Yeah, fuck it, I'll bring the gas mask So what if it gets burned? Don't care, it's an MC1. It's really more of a toss away as far as I'm concerned. If you're a big history buff, there's fucking lots. Go buy one. Um, that's actually something I'd like to have a word about. People who are collectors who hate on new people into collecting gas masks and old military who have a go and say, oh, you either assembled it or it was new, you took it out of the packet. While obviously, if they're rare, you know, by all means, say, what the fuck are you doing? At the moment on eBay, there is a uh, lag, an LAG. That, uh, it's referred to as a Mark II by Weapons and Stuff 93, but it's more like a Mark VI with the exhale valve nipple. Uh, World War II British one. It's on eBay at the moment for auction. It's got about three days left. I'm actually very interested in it. It's brand new. It was never issued. But I'm probably not going to get it because I know I'm going to want to open it. I'm going to want to review it. I'm going to want to use it. So I'm not going to do it. And I hope whoever buys it doesn't. Because those are rare. But I see people having a go at people opening the tin of the M9A1. And there's plenty of those on eBay at the moment for 60 quid. And people have a go, 100% will just argue and say you shouldn't have done it. But will refuse to go on eBay and buy a few to protect them. Like, if you care that much about a mask that's rare, take them off the surplus market and you take care of them. If you know how to do it and you want them off the surplus market because you're scared, take them off and sell them in your own time to specialists. To someone you know and trust. If you don't do that, I'm not going to listen. That's it. You're invalid. Like, just give me your opinion. Don't berate. It's just rude. Like, it's just really rude. Like, I understand if it's something super rare, but not something like Korean War level. <clears throat> Rent over. Right. Polish MC1. Basically a piece of shit. Um, it's not entirely uncomfortable. It'll fit a hose. It'll fit a lot of filters. I'm not sure if it'll fit. Um, should I? You know what? Let's have a look. Obviously, goss threading, but a lot of plastic threads can take other filters. Okay, that's uh, that's a no from me, Chief. Oh, hang on. It's a tough screw in, but there you go. It'll uh, it'll take a NATO thread. You might have seen there's a bit of a struggle on that one. Well, there goes that. Uh, this is my TV, by the way. That's that black box you always see in the corner. So, yes. Last words. MC1's piece of crap. Don't pay more than 15 quid for it unless you want, like, the full absolute kit. And even then, probably see if you can get some, like outserts or lens wipes, whatever, with them. Six-point head harness. Good durable rubber. These things will endure a shitload of pain. Now, these things are just really fucking tough. Like, for a cheap mask, it is durable. I am just biased against it. So don't listen to me when I say it's shit. That is my personal opinion. Tissot tube, so it fogs up, but then it'll defog pretty quickly. It's comfortable. Six-point head harness, always good. Adjustable. Easy to assemble, disassemble, and wash. Pick it up for cheap if you're just starting collecting or if you really want one.